I'm Paige Bailey, a TensorFlow developer advocate, and I'm here today with Doug Stevenson, who's going to tell us all about the latest and greatest in Firebase. Yeah. So show us what you have planned, Doug. Okay, so it uh, turns out Firebase has a bunch of products that help you ensure a high quality of your app, which is very important for a lot of app developers. Uh, every app developer always has to be able to diagnose crashes in their app, Yes. as you know. So Firebase has a tool called Crashlytics. Uh, with Crashlytics, the integration is fairly simple. Add a plugin, add a uh, build dependency to your build, and it just starts monitoring crashes. You don't have to write any lines of code. So the app is crashing. You can see that it's rather problematic for our users. Uh, but it turns out the engineers made a good decision, and they put this new home screen experiment behind a remote config flag. So tell me a little bit more about what remote config is. Right, so remote config lets you define key value pairs in the Firebase console, and then you can publish those to your app without having to actually uh, uh, write any lines of code in your app. So it gets them all uh, almost immediately uh, as you change them in the console. So the idea here is we have a new parameter. It's called home screen experiment enabled, and the default value is true. So this is what's enabling the, the new home screen experiment that's also causing devices to crash. Now, what we want to do here is ask our engineer and say, well, our engineer thinks that uh, it's a translation issue. So we've narrowed it down to Spanish speakers uh, who are using the app on Android. So we can define a new condition here for this flag and say, for Spanish speakers who are using Android, what we can do is disable the home screen experiment. So we'll set it to false for all of them, and all the other users can retain the value true. So now once this is configured, what we'll do is publish this to our app, and the app in internally will use Firebase Remote Config to fetch parameters, pull out that home screen flag, and enable the home screen experiment if it's been enabled for this device. And it's amazing that you're able to narrow in with such laser focus what the problem could be and then to change it without altering a single line of code. Right, right. So it's remotely fixing your app in some cases. And we do recommend that people uh, publish their apps with new features hidden behind remote config flags so you can toggle them on and off for cases like this. Right. So we'll publish our new changes to remote config. We can see that the app is no longer crashy. I see no more sad faces. No more sad faces. And the number of uh, crash-free users has gone up, so we've reduced the crash rate down to uh, below 1%, which is really good. So a successful experiment. That's amazing. So launch into the next demo. What yeah. do we have next? Yeah, so uh, another thing that developers need to be able to do is compare what their users prefer. So A-B perform testing. An, perform an A-B test, yes. So what we can do is use Firebase A-B testing to create and run an experiment. So what we can do in the console here is create an experiment with a name, uh, targeting half of our users with some metrics that we want to track, and we're going to use Firebase Remote Config again to configure this experiment. So uh, for the control group, dark mode will not be enabled. And for the variant group, we will enable this experiment. So remote config is it's going to tell half the devices to run this experiment and half the devices not. And we'll compare uh, the metrics on that and see how it performs. And all of this is done through the console. Yes, all of this is done through the console. Uh, so we can see here our experiment is ready to run. We're especially um, interested in 15-day retention. So we're going to use that as the way to determine whether or not this experiment is successful. So what we can do is start this experiment. Bear in mind that remote config is being used to pull out that Boolean uh, flag and enable dark mode only for those half of uh, all devices that are configured to use it. And what we're going to do is run this A-B test, and that's going to push to our devices. And you can see some of our devices are running dark mode and some are running light mode, and they're switching between the two. I think I like the light mode. You like best. the light? OK, I'm, I'm partial to dark mode, but uh, we'll, well, let's see what the users we'll say. Let this, yeah, the users get to decide based on our goal metrics. Oh, so, man. Yeah, it looks like dark mode is the leader in this. And we can see the exact uh, mark on the retention that this experiment had. This is amazing. I was a data scientist in a previous life, and historically, we would have to use you know weeks of training and custom code and configurations and track all of the metrics and visualizations ourselves. But this looks yeah. like you could do it just by clicking a couple yeah, of buttons. Yeah, that entire engine is, is basically hidden by Firebase A-B testing. So awesome. we can use remote config and then push it out to all of our users. All right. The last thing that a lot of app developers are concerned about and is performance. And probably the most performant, yeah, or the most important one. Yeah, and everyone wants their pages to load fast and their, you know, and their screens to be snappy. So yeah. what we could do is measure that with Firebase Performance Monitoring. Now, with Firebase Performance Monitoring, you put basically one SDK in your app, and it automatically collects things. And it goes out to your users, and it measures the behavior of your app on your users' devices. 
Uh, but if you do need to measure something in particular, so like say the load screen uh, time, what you can do is create a trace. And, and so tell me what a trace is. Uh, yeah, so a trace is something in Firebase Performance Monitoring that measures the duration of something. So here we're creating a new trace, we're starting a timer, then after we load and uh, all of our image and text for the screen, we'll stop the timer. And that becomes our metric. So that's going to get sent to the Firebase Performance Monitoring dashboard. So we're going to run this uh, code on all of our users' devices, collect this metric, and now what you can see here is the trend over time is that 500, 555 milliseconds of load time. That is way too long. It's, way too, it's half a second, but it still feels like an eternity And when you click the button. So what we need to do is bring this down. Uh, now, it turns out this app's been configured with Firebase Remote Config to have a configurable uh, image quality. So the idea is to speed up the performance of our app, we'll ratchet down the quality. Maybe that'll make images uh, smaller and faster to load. So what we can do is create a condition for this and say that half of our users get a reduced quality. So when we uh, when we finalize this, uh, half of our users are going to get the default, and the other half are going to get this reduced image quality, and then we can compare this uh, in the dashboard. Now, again, we do need a few lines of code to enable this in remote config. When that's done, we can collect this information on our users' devices exactly as they're using it uh, and come up with results. So we were able to reduce the time to 111 milliseconds. And our engineer thinks this is a good idea. Much faster, and I agree with them. And it also looks like you can drill down into the data by device. Yeah, yeah. So right now we're slicing this by app version, but you can also use other uh, uh, characteristics of the device and the user to determine what the performance is for very specific conditions. That's amazing. And I love being able to see the visualizations just out of the box. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing all of this great functionality with Firebase. I can't wait to try out an A-B test. And thanks for joining me.